Today at Deutsche Auto Parts, we're going to be installing VWR springs on our Mark 7 GTI. Laid out in front of us, we have all the tools required for this installation. Uh, we, we used a AutoZone spring compressor tool because we thought that might be what most people would use, so they do have a great tool rental program, so that is a good option for you. Here we have all of our ratchets laid out, half inch, three eighths, quarter. We have a 18 millimeter wrench and a 13 millimeter wrench. And then our sockets are a 21 millimeter socket, 18 millimeter socket, 17 millimeter socket, 16 millimeter socket, 13 millimeter socket, and then two triple squares. One is a 14 millimeter triple square or, and a uh, 10 millimeter triple square. We also have our Volkswagen magnetic bolt tray, a small pocket screwdriver, and a 3 8 extension. Here are springs laid out behind us, just something to keep in mind. The larger or wider springs are the front ones. The taller and skinnier springs are the rear springs. So keep in mind during installation, you are gonna to wanna to make sure you have them in place. Doesn't matter left to right on far, as far as orientation on these springs. Um, something else to keep in mind when installing springs, spring compressors can be extremely dangerous. Uh, so this, if you're not comfortable with this installation, you will may want to consider having a professional install them for you because springs can be a dangerous thing when you're uh, compressing them with a spring compressor. Here we are on the driver's side front of the vehicle. We can start by removing the wheels. We're working on a lift, but you may want to be working on jack stands or you likely will be working on jack stands. We start by removing the wheels. Each wheel has a a uh, cap over the lug. These are, people believe a lot of times because of the star pattern that they are a locking cap. They aren't locking caps, they just pull off. So here's a, a hook tool that you'll find in your spare tire well of the trunk that is for removing the cap. So all we do is stick them in and remove them. And remove each one. And we're ready to take the wheel off. These are 17 millimeter bolts. You're, you're gonna wanna crack them loose on the ground and then get the vehicle up in the air. We're using air tools, so we don't need to do that. Here we are at the sway bar, and all we are gonna do is loosen it with our 18 millimeter, crack it loose, and loosen it up. We can pull this out of the way. This will relieve some tension so we can work a little more with this setup. Now we're ready to remove the pinch bolt for the steering knuckle and it is an 18 with a triple square on the opposite side so you will need that triple square to get it loose. It is pretty tight. knuckle assembly. Volkswagen's use a tension fit type knuckle, so you will need to spread that open. There's a specific tool that is from Volkswagen Rowdy that you can use to open the knuckle and then allow the strut assembly to come up. Uh, for the purpose of this video, we're not gonna use that because most people aren't gonna have that. So what you can use is a quarter inch ratchet. So the head of the ratchet can actually sit into the groove here. So once we have it set in place, all we're gonna do is turn it about a quarter of a turn or so. You don't wanna go crazy. Enough to kind of release the tension. And when it's turned enough, you'll know because it should loosen up the strut assembly. And you can see here that our strut assembly is loose in there. All right, now we have to loosen our inner axle because as you see, 
it's as tensioned as far as it can go. So we can start by putting our screwdriver in place to keep the rotor from turning and get our triple square set. And break that one loose and, and turn it out of place. Now we're gonna be taking our ball joint off. Uh, this is something we may or may not need to take down depending on the vehicle. Sometimes you can work everything out without taking this off. Sometimes it's easier to remove this and get everything loosened out of the way. So. So here we are, we're ready to rock our assembly down. We have it tensioned, the, the tension taken off of the knuckle assembly and it's spread open as far as we can get it. So all we're gonna do is rock up and down. As you can see, as you rock, if you put a little tension on it while you rock it down, it will start to slide down the strut assembly. And sometimes it might be helpful to have a friend pull on the control arm, possibly to help you down quicker. We're going to take this clip off right here that holds the uh, cowl panel in place. You will need to pop that out. And we can pull this seal up and out of the way. And if we pull this up, we can gain access to the three 13 millimeter screws that hold the top of the strut assembly in place. You don't need to remove the panel completely. You should be able to just pull it up and loosen it that way. When you've taken the last, the last screw out of this, if you have the bottom loosened, you have to be careful that you don't drop the strut. Ours is still in place, so we're not worrying about that, but something you want to be aware of. Here I are with the front, front strut assembly with the spring attached to it. Uh, we are going to be using an AutoZone spring compressor just so uh, that's most likely what you'll end up using. They do have a great tool program that you can uh, rent tools for free. All you have to do is give them your card. So you, a spring compressor is already mounted on this side. We have it in place. On the other side here, we can lock it in over the spring and you want to Get them on opposite sides, get it under the spring, and then lock them in place, and then hand tighten them down as far as you can. Once we've gotten them snug, we want to make sure that they're on opposing sides, and we have our ratchet, and we're going to tighten them down uh, in an alternating fashion. So you tighten one side down, get it tensioned up pretty good and then tighten the other side. Once, how you know that your spring is all the way tensioned down is this is now loose. So we can now remove the top nut and we are safe to do so. We're using air, this is a 21. Um, but an alternative if you don't have air would be a, a uh, 21 inch uh, wrench with, that has a dog leg that runs down and then you have to hold the strut with an Allen from spinning while you're tightening. Now we can take off our assembly and all of that. And we can loosen our spring compressor.
Now we're ready to reinstall. We want to make sure that we have all the lettering up and we can install this on the bottom of the spring. This is to keep the spring from making noise and moving when it turns so you can put it in place. And then generally, if you're going exceptionally low, you might want to cut the bump stop down on this particular, in these particular sports rings, we should be okay. We don't need to cut our bump stops down. Also something to keep in mind, this is a brand new vehicle with a thousand miles on it. So replacing the strut mount is not something that we're going to do, uh, or the spring or the uh, strut bearing, but on a higher mileage vehicle, we would definitely replace that. Once you have all everything set in place, since this spring is shorter, you don't necessarily need to compress the springs. You can actually just push down and then tighten the nut in place. and we're gonna use our air. And we're now ready for reinstallation. Here we are at the rear of the vehicle. When installing these springs, it's exceptionally easy. Uh, you do have to be a little careful because when you loosen this, this spring will come down, uh, but you don't need any spring compressors on this. We have two 18s uh, with a nut and a bolt, so you'll need a uh, ratchet and a wrench, and then a 13, and then it just drops down. So we're gonna go ahead and do that. Now once we've gotten that out, we can take our spring out and we are going to want to swap these isolators over to the new spring so you want to keep them in place. Just keep in mind, as you can see here, the spring has a specific setup here so you'd best to stay with those lines. 